Welcome back. On this episode of Makery Guy, we're going to take a stickly headboard and footboard in one episode and turn it into a bench. I'm sure in your garages or attics or basements, you've got this headboard, footboard, sideboards, and uh, maybe some slats laying around that are just taking up space. And maybe you've wondered, hey, could I turn that into a bench? Well, in this episode, I'm going to do that with these, and maybe you can pick up some skills and some tricks that'll help you do that with what you have at home. What a flop eared mule. So, the first step to doing anything like this, especially when dealing with a family heirloom stickly piece, is to plan your actions. And what I plan to do for this one here is think about what's got to happen. Now, we've got, pardon my artistic skills here, we've got the headboard. And that's got the slats in it. That part is staying the same. That part is absolutely going to stay the same. Then we've got the shorter footboard, which is the same width, but that's not really going to help us here because the footboard is going to become the arms of the bench. So I've taken about uh, measurements, about 19 inches off of each end is going to become the arms for this. So we're going to have 19 inches of one end of the footboard here, 19 inches of the other end of the footboard here. So that continues that. Then we're gonna take one of the sideboards, originally of the bed, and that is going to go uh, across the front like this to create the seating uh, surface support. And then we're going to use uh, uh, the other, we'll put a cleat back here, and that's going to hold the slat material that we're given from the bed. So these are crucial cuts. The joint here, how we're going to join the side of the footboard to the back of the headboard is going to be an issue. Interestingly, it's kind of cool. Here and here is where the uh, sideboards used to attach to the footboard. And those holes conveniently are going to be right on the inside of here. So aside from taking the length of that board and shortening it, the holes are going to be there for attaching it. So I'll, I'll show you that a little bit. But uh, we're going to make these cuts first. This piece is going to stay the same. It's just going to be set aside except for how we're going to attach through the back of that. So from the side, we're going to have part of the footboard attached to the entire headboard. So that's what it's going to look like from the side. And, um, you know, in a kindergarten version, that's exactly what we're going to do. So now that I've got my plan, we're going to set the headboard aside. We're going to actually make these crucial cuts in the footboard. This has a top rail and a bottom rail and all these slats. And I'll explain how I spaced this out and uh, left myself some room to do some joinery. So. The next step is to actually go cut the stickly footboard. Woo! All right, no nerves. No nerves at all. All right, I put some tape for it to be easier for you to see, but uh, 19 inches from here to this side of the tape, 19 inches from here to this side of the tape is where the cuts are going to be. Uh, that makes the spacing pretty even. It gives me this spacing until it meets the headboard. 
um, and that'll make it nice. Now, the side toward me is the show side for the bench. So this is the actual inside that you're going to see in the bench. So as you can imagine, this is the back of this side. This will be the front of this side. So as you sit on the bench, you'll put your hand here. The seating part where you're actually gonna sit is down here, which is gonna be made out of the sideboard. And that seat part, this is gonna be in the front. This is where those holes are. These are called keyholes. Um, and these are going to latch into that and become the support for what you're going to sit on. And that's going to line up perfectly with this board so that that board will be continuous all the way around. It actually matches up with the headboard as well. So that seating space is gonna be perfect. Um, the next step is to actually just cut these and then we're gonna shorten this to, as you can see, it's longer than this is and it's going to have to equal the width of the headboard. So let's do that first. We're gonna make these cuts. Okay, first of the two cuts. side so we'll do it again here there All right. Second cut. So this part is the waist. This part will become the left arm. This part will become the right arm of the bench. And I think you can probably start to see it now. I am Okay, so now I've got this roughly clamped in place. You can see here, I've got it clamped in place there. And I've got it clamped in place there. You can see and that just those two clamps is holding that together um, you can see this line where it actually continues around so you've got the part of the sideboard there well what was the footboard but now it's our side continues to the back continues around here and now what we're missing is the piece that goes between here and here and that is what we're going to make out of the sideboard and the sideboard has an interesting story to it okay um, on this inside corner that's where our, our left side is um, I've got to make these joints here and here and here and here to establish the hard width of um, the bench in the front because I'll make sure that this joint here is square and I will make sure that this right here is square on both sides. Make sure that, that this is square as well. And then that'll establish the front width. For these down here, what I can do is my pocket hole jig to make, um, to screw the bottoms to the back. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom up here, or down here. On this part up here where this joint is, I'm going to put some dowels. And so I'm going to drill the end of this piece here and I'll also drill into that for some dowels and we'll do dowels and glue. The major structural uh, strength is gonna come from those pocket hole screws down here and um, I'll dowel those as well. So off camera, I already cut the pocket holes that will attach the sides to the uh, headboard and now I've got my the table for my drill press dropped way down and I'm going to drill the uh, holes for the dowels that will help align and support these sides into the back. OK, 
Okay, I've already got the depth of this stop set so that it's half the distance of the dowel I'm going to use to attach this to the back. And uh, we'll just drill the holes now. Listen. Perfect. Okay, this may seem a little confusing. I've got this stacked up. If you can imagine, this side is going to be right here. Now what I've got to do is figure out where these dowels go. I know that this board, the bottom of this and the top, matches with this. And that's going to make sure the feet are at the same length. So I set this on top, make sure these bottom boards are aligned, and then these dowels are telling me exactly where they need to be height-wise. So I'll take my pencil and I will mark at the center of each of these dowels. And that is going to tell me the height, exactly the height, of where those dowels need to be. And I will do the same on the other end because that's going to be specific to that end. I drilled these, but they may not have been perfect, uh, perfectly aligned to the other. So what we're doing is locating exactly where we want these dowels to be in order for this to be centered right on this. And that may mean that our holes are a little off center. So we're locating the exact point of where these need to be. Okay, I've taken the dowels out and what I'm replacing them with now are little markers that locate exactly where our holes are. And what I'll do now is flip this piece over. I only got two, so I've got one on the top and one on the bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll take this one and put it here um, to do what we're doing. But it's going to mark the exact dowel location into the back, uh, into the headboard. Even though this may not be centered in here, I'm going to center my board visually on the headboard and then tap on this piece and it's going to make indentations where I need to drill into the headboard to receive the dowel. Okay, as you can see I've marked where the dowel centers are. Okay, that's this edge of this tape on all three locations. And I need to make sure that this point and this point um, are resting on those lines but then visually center this board on this board. So the points where the points actually lie don't matter. I get down here, I make sure the points are on the right lines, which they are, absolutely. Now I'm not gonna push down yet. I'm going to get up and make sure this board is centered and this board is centered which it is, right there, and, excuse me, right there, and then I'm going to tap down, and tap down, and what that will do is mark my holes for where they actually need to be drilled, because if these dowels aren't exactly centered in the piece, then the, our wood wouldn't be centered on here if we just did a center measurement. So, now I'm gonna switch that one to this hole, and then, bang it down again, do the same on the other side, uh, and then drill these out. Okay, I've got my three holes right here, or locations, marked. And I did the same as we did at the drill press. This is half the distance of one of the dowels I'm going to use. And I'm just going to drill straight down. And that'll give us the receiving holes in the exact locations they need to be for the dowels that are in 
the uh, side pieces. That is hard maple, but <laughs> I definitely need a, uh, a new bit that size. That is dull. So uh, those holes are now ready to receive the dowels, as you can see, in the exact locations that will receive the sides. And what this does. Just like that. I don't want to knock it together quite yet. Uh, but what that, that's going to do is give strength uh, this way. That's going to give a lot of strength. People are going to be sitting on this. Um, the glue is going to hold it in. And then as you remember, there's still three pocket screws on the other side that is going to draw that together even further. And if you've worked with uh, pocket screws at all, you'll know that when you go to drive the screws, they are at a slight angle and your stock tends to try to walk off the edge. Um, it'll walk it slightly. These, with glue and pounded in, are gonna lock that location in, and then the screws are just gonna be extra strength. So I'm not putting a pocket screw on the inside over here because that's gonna be, um, you're gonna be able to see that, and that wouldn't be very pleasant. So uh, just the strength of the three screws and all three of these uh, dowels should be strong enough. Okay, I've got a dry fit, uh, dry assembled. Um, just the dowels are holding it together, no screws yet, no glue. Um, and that's, that's the proportions of our bench. What I wanted to show you is the, the measurement for the front piece is going to be the same as this piece because I've kept this centered on this stock and the front has a post that is the same width as this stock. So I know that this surface is the same on the front. So this board will be the length of my front board that I need to create. So now it's time to center that paint mark that we saw before and cut our front board. So we've got two sideboards to choose from. We've got this sideboard, they're dusty, but there's no damage, no paint. And we've got this sideboard, which when the client dropped this off, I said, oh, I can, I can get that paint off of there and don't worry about that. And he said, no, 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 please don't. And he told me a story. So this paint, his grandmother, this was his grandmother's bed, had asked, to have the room painted uh, many, many, many times and got tired of waiting. So she got up on a ladder and began to paint the room and didn't the paint fall off the ladder and splash everywhere, including the side, this was the side of the bed, down here. So this paint is a memory that is to be retained and it is this old sideboard that will become the front board of this bench. Now I could just cut, you know, this will lock into here and I could just cut and put the screws in the end of that to lock into that side. However, being that this splash of paint is a story and a mark in time and it means so much, that will be front and center on this bench. So to actually reduce the length of this, I'm going to treat this as the center. Obviously it's also 
uh, the center of attention on this bench. Um, find the center point of this and measure out to where those ends will fit in the keyholes and this will become the front board. So I'm going to do those calculations and then make the cuts on this. There's just something about cutting. I, I'll, I cut wood for a living, but when you're cutting stickly, I don't know. It's just got this extra layer of um, nerves on it. So, you know, you get one chance. So I want to take my time and make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, the ends, as I've shown you before, these actually are just screwed in. So what I'll be able to do after this is cut to length is bore holes the way that they did it stickly. And wherever our new cut is, I will install these and then they will fit into the keyhole bits to join those fronts. So right now what we have to do is establish our center, establish the width, and mark it half there, half here, and do some more cutting. Okay, off camera I established the center point as this side of this piece of tape um, that was sort of the center of where the paint is that we want to showcase. I measured, uh, it's 52 inches, so I measured 26. I've got a line here, 26 to a line there, and I already checked on the back of this. There is uh, screws holding this piece to this, and I already made sure that my cuts are not going to come in contact with any of that metal on the other side. I could take that entire piece off and then put it back on, um, but it's just going to be a more accurate cut if I go ahead and make the cuts with it assembled. So I'm going to do that next. Make sure we're right on our line. And make the cut. that screw. There's one there too. Move it down to the other line. This time we are on the left side of the line. Right there. Move it down. So knew we were going to miss that screw. All right. This is a scrap piece, uh, one of the end cuts. And in order to locate where my screw should go in the other end, I'm going to cut this off and then line it up and actually use the through holes to trace. So I'm just going to take a little bit off so I have a slice to use as a stencil. Now we have a stencil for the end piece, and I know this will match up with where this piece was glued before, but that's my marker for where I need to drill the end of the new piece I just cut. Alright, we'll use that pattern that we cut off the other end to transfer exactly where we want the holes. Make sure that's aligned. And that's where we'll drill our holes. And that will make the other end, or both ends of our new front piece just like the originals. Okay, and then the third bit you can see I marked, this was the total depth of the hole originally. And if I put the screw into that hole, you can see where this is weathered and where it's not. So really an inch is almost too much. It's just the difference between here and here that I need to go in with a little bit bigger diameter. So that's what I'll do. And why 
grind it out just a little bit. ready for this. This can go right in. And I will thread that and the other three right in there and then we'll be able to assemble it. Okay, I've got the holes all bored out and now slip these into my tapered holes that I had to make with three different router bits. That'll work. And just tighten these in up to the weathered mark, which should be close to where they had been assembled before. And we'll put that centerpiece in. front piece now milled with the original hardware in the end of it. The paint is centered and because the back isn't fully assembled yet we have a little bit of give in the sides. Enough to dry fit this and make sure that it works and it certainly does. Now the only thing I'm going to have to do is replicate this height because this is higher uh, in the back. 19 inches is a comfortable height for most folks to sit. So if you sit down, you expect that seat to be at about 19 inches. And that's the top of this tape. If I make sure that I create a cleat all the way around that a piece of plywood can go on, the upholsterer can make sure they use a five inch foam or something similar, actually it'll end up being a little bit less because of the three quarter thickness of the, the bottom. I'll make that overhang just a little bit. Uh, but the next step is to make sure that this is firmly fastened permanently um, and then add the cleating in the back. I have the headboard now with the corresponding cleat along the back, which I just used a piece of um, the old bed rail. There was an extra bed rail and it matched the front perfectly. So it'll actually give a surface for the three quarter plywood to sit on and also a surface underneath for some um, supports to be supported. I cut two pieces that go on the sides also that will mimic this, so it'll have a border all the way around, but I can't put those on until I assemble the front to the back because it's gonna cover up where these pocket holes are. So right now I'm going to glue the dowels in and we're going to assemble the front and back and get that clamped up. pocket hole screws. Now I can attach the side supports.
Okay, so I finished putting the supports all the way around and that is the old bed rail on the side and a bed rail in the back and a bed rail there and there is a little shelf on the underside of these pieces where the box spring and mattress would have sat. And that allowed me to put a piece of plywood in here and that will actually become a little bit of storage within the bench because I cut this other piece right here which will go to the upholsterer that will fit on the bench. So let me put that on there and then I'll give you a final look at it. And we have one stickly bench. This is the piece for the upholsterer. It goes in just like this with about an inch overhang and that'll give the fabric and the upholster top a really nice reveal. Uh, it's a little low to sit on now, but it'll be comfortable for the client. And I hope you enjoyed watching this transformation. All I have to do now is uh, rub down with some old English and do some touch up with some of my uh, color match markers and, and make sure that it's got a good polish on it. Hopefully I'll be able to get some pictures back from the client when it's upholstered. I would love to have that for my portfolio. Uh, but next time you see a headboard or footboard by the road or at a garage sale, think bench. It's possible. Lots of different styles, and uh, this could be something you could definitely take on. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please like the video. Please also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to, you can hit the notification bell. And next time I do a cool project like this, your phone will let you know that the video is ready. So thanks again for watching.